Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible power the firstborn of every creature I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz War. Uh, back at you again with another lesson. In this one, I'm in the book of Colossians, chapter 1. And uh, starting at verse 13, it says, Who have delivered us from the power of darkness? And have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now who have delivered us from the power of darkness? All right. What is the power of darkness? The power of darkness is Esau's lies and philosophies. And the of men. As a matter of fact, let me get a quick precept. Let me go into First Peter's. Two and nine. It says, uh, "But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who have called you out of darkness into His marvelous light." All right. See, so out of darkness represents, all right, the ways of man. Okay, Esau's lies and philosophies is Christianity. Okay, and it says, who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which is the truth. All right, and who is the truth? That's Yahweh Shai. All right, Yahweh Shai is that light. All right, let me grab uh, another precept real quick. This is um, Isaiah chapter 60. One and two, it says, Arise, shine, for thou light is come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the but Yahweh shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Alright, see, so that light is Yahweh Shai, which bring us the glory of the Most High. That is risen upon us. This is why we have this truth. This is why we know who we are now. All right. This is why we able to prophesy each week in season and out of season. It says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, which is that blindness. All right. It says, and gross darkness to people. It says, but Yahweh shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. All right, so now that you know what the darkness is, let's go back to uh, Colossians 1 and 13. It says, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, let me let me go into this word real quick of translated and see what the blue letter gives me. Okay. Translate, uh, translate it. Strong's G, 3179, Methiste me, Methiste me. All right, it means to transpose, transfer, remove from one place to another, or change of situation or place, to remove from the office of a steward, to depart from life to death. Okay, in the Strong's, it says, remove, put out, turn away, translate. It says, Trans to transfer, carry away. All right, exchange, put out, remove, translate, turn away. All right, so the word translated means to transpose, transfer, remove from one place to another of change of situation or place. All right. So it says, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom 
of his dear son. Now, let me go into a quick, let me get a quick precept. Yeah, I'm right here. This is a uh, Sirach chapter 10. And uh, start at verse three. It says an unwise king destroyeth his people, but through the prudence of them, which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. In due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. Okay, and who is profitable, all right, that will uh, rule the world? That is Yahweh Shai. All right, through Yahweh Shai, you have the elect, which are the 144,000 men that will be set up to be judges, all right, over the world and over the other nations. You know, fulfilling the scripture, Psalms 82, where it says, Ye are gods. All right, the, the elect will be gods over the other nations with a lowercase g. All right, it says the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. All right, so let me jump down and just hit the point. It says because of unrighteous dealings and juries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. See, there go that word translated. So it says, because of unrighteous dealings and juries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. All right. And right now, who rules the world? That is Esau, Edom. The scriptures say in Job 924, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked and everything that he does is wicked. All right. Unrighteous dealings and juries and riches got by deceit. All right, did not Yahweh Shah say in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy? Uh, he said, but I have come to give life more abundantly. All right, now it says the kingdom is translated, meaning that power is never lost. Okay, power is always translated or transferred from one to the other. So when you go back and read 2 Nedris, the sixth chapter, you understand when the Lord told Edris that when Esau fall, Jacob is up next that followeth. So when the Most High, like Yahweh Shai, take down these Edomites from rulership and strip them from their power, the power is going to Jacob, all right, which is starting with Yahweh Shai, being of the tribe of Judah. It says the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So let me... um. Go back to the definition of translated, right? And it says to transpose, transfer, remove from one place to another. How will we, how will be how will we be removed from one place to another? Because another thing that come in mind is, remember, Apostle Paul said we shall be changed in a twinkle of an of an of an eye. All right, the elect will be delivered through the, the heavenly Father's chariots. All right, with Yahweh Shai, and it says remove from one place to another, meaning we will, they will be taken up. All right, they will be translated, transferred. All right, into the chariots to receive their new bodies to be made perfect, as is promised. All right, and also, you know, took him back to Israel, removed from one place to another. It says or change of situation or place now you know you you see today that jake is on the bottom where the poor where the so-called minority as they call it all right and when this happens all right when yahweh shai come with healing in his wings to recover the remnant of his elect you can say the saying that they say you know we're going to go from rags to riches all right just like that you know in a twinkle of an eye we're going to go from rags to riches. We're going to be translated, transferred, all right, of change of situation. Our situation now is that we're on the bottom. But our situation then, uh, uh, then when Yahweh Shai come, we will be on the top. All right. It says of change of situation or place. All right. So let's go back. It says, who have delivered us from the power of darkness? And have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And why do we have redemption? Because Yahweh Shai well, says we have redemption through his blood. Why do we have redemption through his blood? Because Yahweh Shai was that ultimate sacrifice. All right. He laid his life down for uh, Israel, in particular, the elect. This is why we able to be forgiven of our sins. It says, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature. So the invisible power is the heavenly father. All right. The firstborn of every creature. All right. Meaning Yahweh Shai was the first spirit created. OK, and this takes it back to Genesis, you know, going back to Genesis one and one. Let me let me. um. Matter of fact, let me read 16 and then I grab a precept. It says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist all right, so Yahweh Shai being the Father's only begotten Son, meaning first spirit created. All right, he's above all things. It says, who is the image of the invisible power, the firstborn of every creature. And it says, for by him were all things created that is in that are in heaven, that are in the earth, visible and in, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him all right so you know when you go into genesis real quick genesis 1 and 1 it says in the beginning it says it says let me read it verbatim in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth now this is you know more like a stumbling block for those who are unlearned, but it's actually saying in the beginning, Allah Hayim, all right, represents the powers created in the heaven and the earth. Now, when you go into the blue letter, it show you that it would say Allah, Allah Elohim, all right, which means Allah Hayim in the Hebrew tongue. Now it says Elohim. Now in the Hebrew, it says Allah Hayyama. So Allah Hayyam. Allah Hayyam, all right? And it says what? Plural, all right, meaning powers, okay? It says rulers, judges, divine ones, angels, gods. You see that? So it was Yahweh Shai and, and the uh, powers, the angels, all right, which are the first fruits, which is the elect that actually created everything and the earth and everything that exists. And these are what? The rulers, the judges, the divine ones, the angels, gods. Okay. So let's go back and read that again. It says, in the beginning, Allah Hayim created the heaven and the earth. All right. Now, when you... uh. Let me see here. Okay, when you jump down to verse 26, let's read 25. No, let's read 26. Let's get to a point. It says, it says, and let's read it verbatim. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. And, er, and and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, when you read it in its proper context, all right, it says, and Allah Hayim said, meaning, and the powers said, let us make man in our image. Notice it says us. Let us make man in our, which is plural, our image after our likeness. All right. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea 
and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. All right, so with that being said, let me highlight this, and let me get a uh, Lord God. All right. Okay, Genesis 2 and 4. So this is actually the first time when you actually uh, uh, sees the Heavenly Father's name. Okay, so this is uh, Genesis 2 and 4. It says, these are the generations of heaven and of the earth when they were created in the day that Yahweh, all right, Lord God, Yahweh made the earth and the heavens. Okay. Okay, so let's go into that. Lord God. See, you see Yehovah, which is at the top, you see the Hebrew H3060 uh 68. Yahweh. Yahweh. All right. So this is the first time you actually seize the Lord's name, which means the existing one. Meaning Yah means he. Uh how it means exists, all right, or he to be, all right. So this is actually in the second chapters when you see the Heavenly Father's name being um, uh, put into the uh, scriptures, you know, to, to receive that, to basically uh, get that understanding that it was the Allah Hayams, the powers that the Heavenly Father sent out, which, which we like to say, the Heavenly Father gave Yahweh Shai the blueprint, all right? And the Allah Hayams, which was the spirits created after Yahweh Shai, that helped Yahweh Shai create everything in the earth, all right? So here in the second chapter is the first time where you actually see the Lord's name taking credit for the work because the Heavenly Father is the one that sits on the throne. He is the highest. He is the ultimate power that runs, runs the universe, all right? So... All right, with that being said, let's go back. Colossians 1 and, uh, and uh, 15, it says, Who is the image of the invisible power? The firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. All right. Now I just want to see what the dictionary can give me here. It says something that consists is something that consists of particular things or people is formed from them. Something that consists and something else has that thing as it main or other or only part. Okay, all things consist. So, like, yeah, I'm just uh, looking up. I want to just see for myself for more for understanding. To place together, to set in the same place, to bring or band together. See that? To band together, to stand with or near, to set one with another. All right. By way of presenting or introducing him to comprehend. Mm. To put together by way of composition or combination to teach by combining and comparing. To put together, un un uh, unite parts into one whole. To be composed of consist. All right, to place together, to set in the same place, to bring or band together. So it says, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Now this word preeminence. Let me see here in the dictionary. It says if someone or something is preeminent, 
in a group, they are more important, powerful, or capable than other people or things in a group. And that is Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is that someone or something that is preeminent, all right, in the group, okay, meaning he's the head of the church. The elect, you know, starting with the men, is the government body of Yahweh Shai. And it says, uh, which is more, more important, all right, Yahweh Shai is more important and powerful or capable than other people or things in, 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 in the group. All right, preeminent, preeminent. Now, must go to blue letter real quick. Preeminence. Okay, to be first. Hold the hold the first place. You see, so Yahweh Shai is the first. To be first, in rank. Check that out. All right, this is why we worship Yahweh Shai. All right, so let's read that again. It says, uh, verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. All right, being the first, more powerful. And this is why we're able to get through these times that we're living in now. Because Yahweh Shai got through his, through through the time where he went through his darkest hours. So we can actually get through it too. All right. He made a way. All right. So all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It says, verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. It says, and you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now have he reconciled. Now, there's a key word there, reconcile. And um, let me see what the definitions say. If you reconcile two beliefs facts or demands that seem to be opposed or completely different, you find a way in which they can both be true or both be successful. All right, let's go to the blue letter. All right, because this reconcile kills, all right, that doctrine in which Christianity like, loves to, you know, say that the, the Lord opened up his covenant you know, to everyone in the earth, all right? His covenant was only given to the Israelites, okay? Scriptures say, uh, 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 least Jacob be consumed, the Lord changed not, all right? So the Lord never changed, and it's reconcile. Let me see what the blue letter says. To reconcile completely, to reconcile uh, back again. How do you reconcile, all right, to bring back again? You can't bring back again that was never, never apart. In order to bring back something again, it would had to be a part of each other. All right. It's going into that wow olive tree. OK, being grafted, being grafted in, meaning the Gentiles, which represents the Israelite foreigners in which Paul was speaking about. All right. Not uh, East Edomites or Hamites or Ishmaelites. He was talking about Israelite foreigners, okay, Jews, the Hellenists, uh, uh, it was Jews, Israelites, who took on the customs and the ways of the heathen, all right? So to reconcile back again, bring back a former state of harmony, because why? There was a falling away. At that time, you had the Jews, which kept the laws of the Lord, all right? And they had a squirrel with those that were Israelites, that were foreigners, all right, that did not keep the law of the Most High. There was a big quarrel going on when Paul was um, was uh, teaching the Israelite foreigners, all right? It was about Yahweh Shai, 
Yahweh Shai was come to what? Reconcile us back unto the heavenly father. Well, back unto him, to him, going to him and then to the heavenly father. Because you can't get to the father unless you go through Yahweh Shai. So Yahweh Shai was that middle, middle puzzle, that middle piece to bring it all back together. All right. He was the peacemaker. And that was to those that was of the elect that would believe in Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. All right, so I know it says that, but uh, bear with me. Let me um, etymology and uh, just want to see some. I saw something the other day. We'll reconcile here in the etymology. I think it's the same thing I just read. Uh, to bring together again. All right. See? To bring. To bring together again. Ooh, to regain. Okay? To regain. All right. Win over again. To bring together again, you would have to bend together. All right? We were never together with the other nations. We were never together with Esau, Edom. All right, the covenant was given to Israel. All right. So anyway, you know, you can do your due diligence and get more deeper into the word reconcile. But it says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven and you that were sometime alienated. All right, sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. Yet now have he reconciled. All right, so why was we alienated and, and, and enemies in our mind by wicked works? It wasn't of the flesh that we were made uh, enemies. It was because of our minds. Now, when you go into Baruch, Baruch the fourth chapter and um I think I got it highlight I think I had highlighted it uh bear with me oh verse 28 it says Baruch 4 28 for as it was your mind to go astray from Yahweh so being returned seek him ten times more all right, so it was our minds that went astray because, all right, we were scattered. We were kicked out of our land. We were forced out of our land and we were scattered among the other nations. And our people took on the customs and the ways of man. Okay, they took on the customs and the ways of the land. They kept the traditions of men. All right, they forgot that they were Israelites and, and keeping the ordinance of the Lord's holy days and acknowledging the power that exists which is our power, which is Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai. It says, as for as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High. So being returned, reconciled, being brought back again, seek him 10 times more. So it is our duty to seek the Lord 10 times more. All right. While the Lord is restoring us back, our back, um, our identity. You know, he's restoring back unto us the things we once knew. He's bringing us back. He's staring our minds up in the remembrance of things we once knew. All right. He's given us back his name. Okay. So it says. Uh, verse 22. It says in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and, un and re unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. So, all right, the important thing is, the important thing is that, we keep the faith and grounded, continue in the faith and be grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. 
All right. So Lord willing, I know this lesson is pretty long, but I, I hope that is edifying to those of the whole four elect. I want to give all praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's elect. Shalom.